Hello and welcome to a reading vlog. My name is Beck, and I'm just going to quickly cover off the things that I am wanting to read and finish this week. So the first thing is The Travel With Peace by Joe Abercrombie. I have started that audiobook. I've barely made a dent in it actually, but I'm really enjoying it. Stephen Pacey does an awesome job. And even though there's only one narrator for it, he makes all of the characters sound so individualistic. So I highly anticipate an audiobook by him each time one comes out. The first book is A Little Hatred. And if this gives any indication, it's like just over 500 pages. The audiobook is about 21 hours long for the sequel and this one was 20 hours long so that'll only take me like 10 ish hours to finish hopefully I can do that in a week but I'm aiming to so we'll see how far I get on that one next I've also got a high fantasy like an adult high fantasy to read and usually I try and vary my audiobooks compared to what I'm physically reading but in this case I'm reading Malice by John Gwynn this is the first in an adult high fantasy it's got multiple perspectives it's got all the classic things in fantasy like magical items a quest magical races like giants and wars and gods and stuff and while I do like this it's got a lot going on and I've got about 200 pages left so I'm almost at the end and I saved it so that I could read it during a vlog so that I could talk about it because I don't know how I feel about this I don't know if I'm going to continue this. It's kind of reading a little bit lackluster and in the first 70 pages we're introduced to six or seven different perspectives and that's just a little bit overwhelming for me when I'm only interested in like maximum two of them at the moment. Corbin is the main character and we follow him and characters pivoting around him. So I'm only really interested in Corbin because he seems to be like the chosen one. Jury's still out on whether I'll continue this series or not. I think at the moment it's sitting at about a three stars and I thought it would pick up in the second half and it's just kind of coasted and stayed the same because when I watched Daniel Green's review he said that the first section of it is a lot of build up and it has been a lot of build up. We'll see what I think about the ending because there's certain things that have piqued my interest but for the most part it's stayed at about a three star rating for me so I'm anticipating it'll stay the same for the rest of the book. And then just behind me I have my October TBR but I've got one that wasn't on my October TBR and that is Nixia and I know that this is a sci-fi and that's it so hopefully after I finish Malice I can jump into Nixia because this is on my TBR shelf or it was I mean obviously I'm holding it now but it's in my TBR jar which is up here and I was planning on doing a TBR jar pick potentially in this vlog if I finish a bunch of these books but I want to get to this before I do that TBR jar pick so my reading for this week is quite ambitious and I already have a to-do list today it's only like just after 9 30 in the morning so I think I'm going to spend most of my day at my computer doing to-do list stuff and then hopefully doing some reading maybe later this afternoon but I will pop in and update you later on today. Hello it is now almost four o'clock in the afternoon and I have done everything but one thing on my to-do list and it's the scariest thing so I've kind of been putting it off but I have read more of Malice and I am now how many pages in am I? I'm on page 498 and there are 628 pages in here so I've got about 130 to go. I think I had the right instinct about it when I initially talked about this book but I don't think I really described what actually was going on in here. I did mention that there are a lot of perspectives and Corbin was the main one so he's like the chosen one and he starts out in this town he's still there it's very much a multiple perspective where lots of stuff is happening but not progressing because there's so much detail to just be covered straight up from the beginning that movement doesn't tend to happen too much. There are some factions that have moved towards each other in terms of communicating and making alliances but it's been very politically driven and because there have been so many world building things happening I haven't really cared necessarily about what it's building up because there is a lot of setup but not a lot of character and investment at least in my general perspective and opinion because otherwise I would be very much interested in it but sometimes I find that I'm either skim reading it or just kind of my eyes are flicking to the next page when I'm supposed to be reading the first page instead of the second or I'm getting easily distracted by my phone or I'm finding this really easy to put down during a chapter and I'm the type of person who likes to read to the end of a chapter to put a book down. So it's not really capturing my attention but it is enjoyable enough and that's why I'm on the fence about continuing it or not because this just really says to me that it's setting everything up now and then stuff will get interesting later. And sure enough, something has started to happen. Not that the rest of the book means that it's boring and nothing at all is happening. Things are going ahead, but it's just at a very slow pace. I think that's what my problem is with this book. The pace is just very slow and there's a lot of stuff that is starting out at a slow burn and it's holding me back from enjoying this book to the extent that I could. There's also a lot of stuff in here 
here that just says debut author to me and that's not necessarily a bad thing it just means that there is a bit of an imbalance and I noticed that the author's writing is very blunt but direct and I want to say simple but I don't mean that in a nasty way I just mean that in a it's really easy to absorb way but there's just a lot of it and a lot going on so the scope of it is not what I'm interested in also this author uses a lot of suddenly this happened and and then this happened and it takes out some of the drama and some of the oomph that could be delivered in the prose so I'm not liking the prose very much and I'm not liking the pace very much and the characters are a little bit undercooked compared to what I want them to be so all of that is going on and that is why I think I'm going to be sitting on a three stars out of five for this. Obviously I haven't finished it yet, but I'm pretty set in what I'm going to rate it at this point. And that is why I wanted to hold off and finish it during a vlog so that I could actually talk about it because I've seen a lot of people like this and then I've seen a lot of people not talk about this. And so I wanted to mention it and talk about my thoughts. So if you've read this, please let me know because I'd be interested to see what your rating is. I think it really depends on what kind of fantasy you like reading because if you like plot books, if you like political books, and if you like multiple perspective books, this is really going to be your thing. But if you're like me and you prefer one to three perspectives, perspectives maybe four but deeply involved with character and the character informs the plot rather than the plot being the focus and the formula of the tropes in here informing what the characters are being pushed to do. I think you'll not like this book as much as the plot people like this book if that makes sense. So hopefully I finish this today. Hopefully I actually address the last thing on my to-do list because I'm intimidated. It involves me setting myself up for freelancing. At the start of the year I was finishing an online course in proofreading and copy editing and I've finished that now and I've got my website up and running and it's all just very intimidating when you're starting out as a freelancer to basically email people and be like hello please hire me for work but that's essentially what I'm gonna try and start doing. But at the moment reading has been my priority. So I'm kind of trying to balance a few things at the moment because the lockdown is just a bit taxing. So I need to make sure my mental energy is well spent. I don't think I'll update again today unless it's a very, very brief one because I have talked a lot now in front of this bookshelf. So I should actually go and do stuff with the rest of my afternoon. So it is now the afternoon on Tuesday and I have finished malice and like I said before I'm giving this a three out of five stars but some of the things I didn't mention before was that this book did this thing where a lot of the characters had names starting with the same letter and it wasn't just one or two it was more than ten. C, M, B, V. When I'm reading a fantasy book and I'm reading about characters and a world that I am completely unfamiliar with place names and character names need to be distinctive and something about the way this handled that it just added to the chaos of the book and I needed it to be more settled. I think that's what I struggled with the most that this didn't really move along and it established a lot all at the same time and while I was interested in the characters I didn't love them. So I do have the rest of this series and I'm officially saying that I'm not going to continue. Not because I think that this series is bad, I want to make that very clear, I just think that this series personally just isn't to my taste and while I did like certain things about this and I like certain directions it went, I found that because it leaned really heavily into fantasy tropes, which I love reading about but I just need to care about the character to be invested in the story and that's where this kind of fell short for me and because of the way that it ended and because of the way it leaned so heavily into this prophecy and the fantasy tropes the ending seemed inevitable to me rather than particularly surprising and when bad stuff happened I wasn't upset by it like I said I'm not invested in these characters as much as I needed to be for this ending so yeah I'm not continuing this series but it was enjoyable enough and I'm glad that I read it because that means that I could actually have a opinion about whether I can continue the series or not and it's taken me a few days to settle onto that opinion. I'm settled now, I'm not going to continue so you won't see the rest of the books on my TBR shelf for very much longer. Now that I finished this I am going home later today and I did get something in the mail so I'm just going to go and unbox that. I have a package from Hachette. It is now Wednesday and I'm at home by the way. Let's unbox this right now shall we? Oh, you can't even see what it is. It is Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. And I don't know what this book follows, except 
that it has Morgan Crow as the main character. She in Nevermore is 11 years old and she's from a family who believes she's cursed living in a town with people who believe she is cursed and she gets whisked away by Jupiter North and taken to the world of Nevermore. So it has a magical school in the second book, it has tournaments in the first book, it has potentially a mystery in this book because I think something is happening with all the magical animals and that's why there's the talking cat on this one. So I'm quite looking forward to getting into this third installment because thankfully Hachette kindly sent this to me but I've also pre-ordered a signed copy so I will have two copies of this wonderful book and I can't wait to get into this so I think I'm gonna end up picking this up today actually because I have just finished reading a bunch of physical books and if you didn't know I held up Nixia at the beginning of this vlog but I ended up starting it yesterday and I got 75 pages in and then I DNF'd it and I think it's just been sitting on my to-be-read pile a little bit too long it was on there in 2017 and I I think my reading tastes have changed since then. It is a young adult and I thought it was an adult and it's a sci-fi where our main character Emmett, he's from quite a working class, poorer neighborhood He's black and there are a bunch of other minorities, I guess, that have been tasked with going into space and mining this new element called Nixia and it's very adaptable. It's kind of like a magical substance. And the reason that only teenagers have been chosen for this quest is that the planet of aliens that they need to go and mine the Nixia on, they revere children. That is why there are teenagers going into space for this mission. It's basically like Survivor, but set in space. I like the premise, but I didn't love the writing style and some things in it just kind of frustrated me and were a little bit cheesy and there wasn't enough detail where I expected character building. Anyway, I think my expectations are just misaligned with Nixia and I've seen positive reviews on Goodreads for it so I just don't think it's my kind of book which is why I'm planning on unhauling it. That means that there's one less book on my TBR pile so that brings me down to 12. Well, 13 now but this is going on and then off because I'm reading it now. <laughs> Hello, I'm back and I have rearranged the books on the bookshelf behind me. I filmed a separate video for that, but it wouldn't be a reading vlog without me unhauling something. So I have a bunch of books that I didn't want to put on these shelves behind me. So I'm just going to run through them really quickly and unhaul them right with you now. The first one is Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor and her husband Jim Bartolo. He did the illustrations. This is a story that is set in the same world as Lainey Taylor's Door of Smoke and Bone trilogy. And this follows the side character Kaoru's best friend, Zuzana and how she met her partner. I really liked this, thought it was at the time, but I ended up DNFing the trilogy that Lainey Taylor wrote, so it doesn't really make sense to hold on to this when it connects to a higher trilogy. And I read it, I've enjoyed it, I think it's time to pass it on now. Next is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. Again, I read this a while ago, I gave it five out of five stars at the time. It is a male-male romance, I believe, and that is all I genuinely remember about this. I may as well pass this on to someone who'll enjoy it, like I did. And then the same deal for If I Was Your Girl, I believe this is a trans story with a trans model on it written by a trans author and it's a trans romance. Uh, Amanda Hardy is the new girl in school and like any other girl all she wants is to make friends and fit in but Amanda is keeping a secret. So there you go that's what this one's about. I gave it four stars I think when I read it and it was a long time ago and I have no desire to reread it so that's why this one is going as well. And then I have Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I've actually got the final copy as a paperback and then way way a long time ago I did a whole thing where I was collecting advanced reader copies and proofs and stuff and I ended up getting the proof of Red Sister by Mark Lawrence but I don't see the need to hold on to these especially because I've heard that the ending to this trilogy is a bit meh and I've heard about allegations against Mark Lawrence when it comes to him bullying women on Twitter. I don't know how severe those allegations are but I don't want to continue this trilogy anyway so I didn't want to hold on to this regardless. I have linked to this in the past when V.E. Schwab mentioned this but I'll link it again if I remember in the comments. I'll pin a comment or something or put it in the description so that you can go and look at all of the discourse on it on Twitter but anyway that is one of the reasons why I'm getting rid of this but it's not like the sole reason. I don't have any desire to read on in the trilogy from here and I don't have to buy them and I can't be bothered doing that either so these are gonna go. And then last up I have three different sets of manga so I've got Blue Exorcist. This is a bunch of volumes it's like one six seven and eight I have the rest at Dave's. My book collection is very much split between my house and Dave's place but I read 
read these I think at the start of this year and I ended up kind of just feeling lackluster about them and had a lot of characters. It's about a boy who is half human half Satan and he goes to a demon hunting school and he has to hide his demonic powers from his classmates. That's the premise for this. It's quite action-packed, it's fun, but it's just not a series that I have any interest in continuing so I don't see the reason to hold on to any more of the manga. And that is the same for Attack on Titan which I'm unhauling as well. I am holding on to the first four volumes and they are here on my shelves but that is because I enjoyed the beginning of this series and also it comes in a cool box set so I thought I'd keep the start and then get rid of these because I like the beginning more than I like the continuation. Similar reasons as Blue Exorcist, it just introduced a lot of characters. I felt like it diluted the plot for me. I liked it for what it was but I am not continuing on with the manga series so again that's why I'm getting rid of this. I don't see any need for it to take up space on my shelves. And then lastly we have a series that is very old and near and dear to my heart but it is Vampire Night. I read these, I watched the anime when I was in my vampire phase when I was like 17, 16 and I have one, two, seven and seven. So I didn't really stick very well to collecting the manga so I'm not gonna hold on to it now. I don't even remember much of this except that there's a school in it, there are vampires and there are humans at this school, there's a night class and a day class, that's it. So I liked it when I read it I guess but I haven't read it for many years now so it doesn't make sense to hold on to it anymore. And there you go, that is my little mini unhaul for this vlog. Now I am going to go off and read Holopox and listen to my audiobook for The Trouble With Peace. I am 13% through that book and I'm quite enjoying it but when it comes to Joe Abercrombie I find it really difficult to describe what his plot is about only because when I'm reading or rather listening to his books his characters just live and breathe on the page for me and I'm very much invested in their perspectives but when it comes to the plot and the politics behind it I kind of absorb those peripherally and it's very much character driven even though there is a plot that's also going on so I'm gonna really struggle to summarize it so I won't but it is an installment in his first law series so if you want to read that go and read the blade itself and then read through his books in chronological order and then read an age of madness which is the second book that is in his series currently that is what I'm listening to so there is a summary of a little hatred and I read that on his website so I will link that below but it has got spoilers galore in it so only read it if you've already read A Little Hatred and if you've read all of his first lore books so far which is what I have so that caught me up but also on some of the characters I was like who are they again? So I'm rediscovering stuff as I'm listening to this audiobook and it's already made me laugh it's already got such grotesque themes and character actions in it and it's making me go ooh but that's the whole point of his books he is like Lord of Grimdark and he does it so well so yes I'm quite enjoying it I don't know if I'm gonna finish it during this vlog but at least I've started it and I'm 13% through. Hello it is now Saturday at 12 30 and we're just going to eat lunch and then go for a walk because we have loved walking and listening to audiobooks but I'll update you later properly because I have a feeling I'm gonna finish the Joe Abercrombie book. Hello it's Sunday yes I'm wearing the same jumper as yesterday but also I finished the Joe Abercrombie audiobook that I was mentioning. I gave it a five out of five stars I thought it could be a four and a half out of five or a five but I was like screw it and gave it a five because a little hatred to me was also a five stars and a little hatred had a few beats at the end that were I guess quite climactic and almost cliffhangery and then they were wrapped up or disclosed more in the sequel and then the ending of the sequel was more of like a simmering ending so I think that's why I was wanting to give it a four and a half but the way I look at it is Joe Abercrombie's writing is so deliberate so clever it's funny it's gross and it's just awesome so I don't see any particular reason to give it less than a five because it absolutely deserves one I don't know how I'm gonna talk about this in a wrap up but I'm gonna have to try and figure out how because not spoiling this book is going to be really hard so I need to write very meticulous notes now that I've finished the audiobook but I really loved it. I want the sequel already. I don't know if it's a quartet or a trilogy but I think it comes out next year around the same time as now so I won't have hopefully too long to wait. But after that I also started a new audiobook. Let me talk about that audiobook that I've started but first I'll talk about Holopox because I have read 112 pages of this now and I'm about a fifth through because this is surprisingly 500 pages long and it's a middle grade which is quite long for a middle grade but I thought I would have done more progress on this but if you remember earlier in the week I said that I was working through some of my freelancing stuff and usually I would read while Dave works from home but I was actually also working 
while he was working because I was doing some freelance stuff. So that is time I would have spent physically reading, which is why I'm a little bit behind on reading this. So I don't know if I'm gonna actually have it finished by the time October starts. And I was hoping to, because I wanted to spend my October reading time reading the spooky book, which are all here behind me, but that's okay. It just didn't happen to work out. But I put this on my October TBR video anyway, just in case, because I thought it might accidentally slip into that month regardless. And now for the audiobook that I'm listening to, it is by Joe Hill and it's Nosferatu and it's about this guy who is like a serial pedophile murderer and about a young girl who has this ability to walk from the real realm into the cognitive realm and she uses her bike to do that. She rides across this bridge and it's like the shortcut and she can put that shortcut wherever she wants it to be between states or whatever and arrive within no time to anywhere she wants. So she uses her bike. This guy who is like this serial killer, uh, he is kind of like the monster in It. He feeds off children and he uses a Rolls Royce as his vehicle to transport himself through the cognitive realm. So he is this scary being and because he sucks energy they call him the vampire so that's why Nosferatu is the book title but I uh, I don't know what it is about this book and I think it's me that's the problem. I got 20% into the audiobook and I'm DNFing it now and I think I'll like Joe Hill's other books compared to this one because the way that the other books are set up, their premise, is a lot more interesting to me than this guy who is a serial killer who's been getting away with it for years and years and years. He's unnaturally uh, got age as longevity because of all of the people he is consuming so he tends to frame other killers and other murderers in his place because he recruits them to help him and then he places all the blame on them and then moves on to the next section of kids that he's going to basically destroy. So it's been really hard to catch him and our main character wants to do that so while it is interesting enough I just don't really care <laughs> So I think I'm gonna move on to Joe Hill's other books. A friend told me to start Horns next and I was thinking of starting The Fireman next. I'm not sure which one I'll start next but it will be one of those two because those are the two I physically own and they are also on my October TBR. But I think I might end the vlog here. Usually I would extend it the next couple of days to capture the rest of September but I think I've done as much reading as I can. I'm just doing job applications and a few bits and pieces on my computer so I don't think I'm gonna read much today unless it's an audiobook and because I've DNF'd the Joe Hill audiobook I want to start the next Dresden Files book because I need something that's fast paced and funny and intriguing and got rich characters in it so naturally Dresden is my next choice so the next audiobook is available because Dave has just finished it so I think that's what I'm gonna listen to next but as for this vlog I read Malice I gave it three stars I read 75 pages of Nixia by Scott Rainton and Dan it at 75 pages I read 112 pages of Hollowpox and this one I'm going to continue because I'm quite enjoying myself I also finished A Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie which I gave five out of five stars and then I DNF'd the Joe Hill book Nosferatu at 20%. So that is it for I guess this week of reading but let me know if you've read any of these down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!